Welcome once again to Heart of the Shepherd as we continue our chronological study of the prophetic book of Isaiah. Now our chapter reading today, chapters I should say, is Isaiah chapters 11 and 12. And I've titled the devotional, The Rise of a King and Universal Peace. Now, Isaiah, having foretold the imminent judgment of the Lord and the invasion of an enemy, he prophesied a message of hope to Judah, and that is that the coming of a king was like none other. Now, we've already read what would be the sign of the king's coming, and it was that the prophet foretold that the king would be born of a virgin in Isaiah 7 and verse 14 and that his titles and attributes would be divine, according to Isaiah 9, 6, and 7. However, his coming was not imminent. Now, as warned, the Assyrians conquered Israel and took the people away, according to Isaiah chapter 10. And though all seemed lost, Isaiah prophesied the serious fall in Isaiah 10, verses 10 through 19, and the restoration of a remnant of Israel that would return to the land. And of course, that did take place years later. Now, after prophesying Israel's coming sorrows and afflictions, Isaiah encouraged the people to look. Look for the Messiah King who would rule the earth and whose reign would usher in universal peace. Let's read Isaiah chapter 11, verses, uh, well, verse 6 through 9 is the prophecy of universal peace, but let's look at the whole chapter. For instance, let's begin with the identification of the Messiah by his lineage, and you find that in verse 1. Now, the future king would be born of David's lineage, and here we read, and I quote, a rod that is a shoot or a sprout out of the stem of Jesse. Jesse was the father of King David, and then continues, and a branch out of his root. And so there's a very clear prophecy that the Messiah must come from the lineage of King David. Now, this one that would come would be a royal son, and therefore a rightful heir to the throne of Israel. Then consider with me the attributes of the Messiah King, Isaiah 11 and verses 2 through 5. Now, Isaiah prophesied that the future king would be divine, and we read in verse 2, for the Spirit of the Lord would rest upon him. Now, we also consider with the spirit of wisdom and understanding that he would be a discerning, wise counselor. He would also be, verse 2 again, mighty. And he would know the plans and the purpose of the Lord. For we read in verse 2 that he will have the spirit of knowledge. Again, in verse 2, he would fear the Lord. And please him, of course, the word fear there is he would revere the Lord, whom we know was his heavenly father. Now, the coming king would not, would rather be omniscient. Because we read in verse 3 that he would not judge after the sight of the eyes as man would, nor reprove after the hearing of his ears. He is an omniscient God. He doesn't need to, to see, for he already knows. Now, of verse 4, he will also be an impartial, righteous judge. And we read that he will give no favor to the poor or to the rich. He will be a righteous ruler. He will address the sins of man that have corrupted the earth since the fall of Adam. We read in verse 4 that he will condemn the wicked. And in verse 5, he will be a righteous, faithful judge. And of course, we know from the book of Revelation that the Lord Jesus Christ will rule and reign in Jerusalem over the earth. Now, consider then verses 6 through 9, and here we have that the reign of the Messiah King. Now, still, this is still future. Even in our day, it follows the second coming of Christ, that the Messiah King will usher in a time of universal peace. Verses 6 through 9. You know, there have been many rulers and kings that have vowed their rule would usher in a utopia. 
and they promise universal peace. Religions have, purpo uh, have proposed their way to lasting peace, and political leaders have pledged that their efforts would prepare a path for universal peace. Indeed, the whole purpose of the United Nations are today, today is supposedly to strive for peace. And yet, you and I know that all attempts at peace have failed. However, Isaiah prophesied that there will be a day of universal peace when the Prince of Peace rules the world from the throne of David. Prophesying that old animosities would be banished when the Lord reigns on the earth, we read this wonderful passage beginning in verse 6 where we read, The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. We continue verse 7. The cow and the bear shall feed, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. In verse 8, the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp and a poisonous snake, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. They shall not hurt or destroy. In all my holy mountain, we read in verse 9, for the earth shall be full of knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And then consider verses 10 through 16. And here we have the promise of the Lord gathering Israel, that is the Jewish people, out of the midst of the nations. And so as promised, we read again, when the, quote, root of Jesse, now that being Jesus Christ, reigns. Uh, of course, Christ being the son of David, who was the son of Jesse. And so as promised then, when the root of Jesse, Jesus Christ reigns, the children of Israel will be gathered to their land out of the midst of the nations of the world, verses 10 and 11. And the Lord will be the ensign of the people. And we read in the Gentiles, verse 10, will seek him. The Jews who have been scattered among the nations of the world and have been outcast of Israel and exiles and the dispersed of Judah, we read, in that day shall be gathered from the four corners of the earth. That is, from the north, from the south, from the east, and from the west. Israel and Judah will set aside their envy and animosities. And as the Lord delivered Israel out of Egypt, we read in verse 16, the faithful of Israel will be gathered from all over the world. And then briefly, Isaiah chapter 12. And here we have a brief but wonderful song of salvation. Now, Isaiah 12 began with the phrase, quote, and in that day. Now, that's continuing the prophecy of the second coming of Jesus Christ as the Messiah, as we've read it in Isaiah chapter 11. Now, you'll notice that this chapter was a celebratory song of Israel's promised salvation. Now, Isaiah prophesied when Israel's heart turns to the Lord, that in verse 1, his anger will be turned away. The people will sing, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Well, a closing thought for you today, and it is this. When Christ returns to reign, his people will praise the Lord. They will, in verse 4, call upon his name and declare his doings among the people and exalt his name. Believers will declare the Lord's grace and mercies to the nations, and all the earth will know the Lord, verse 5, hath done excellent things. And in that day, Jerusalem will ring with shouts of joy, saying in verse 6, Great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. And of course, that Holy One is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, friend, what a glorious day that will be when Christ returns to reign upon the earth. Let me ask you this afternoon or morning or wherever you're listening to this, are you ready for the coming of Jesus Christ? You can be by simply trusting Him and accepting Him as your Savior and Lord. 
want you to do that today. Turn from your sin and put your faith and trust in Christ who died for your sins, was buried, and raised from the dead. Oh, it's a glorious day for those who know the Lord as Savior when He comes. God bless you and bye-bye.